What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna do a beginner tutorial talking about how to model a toolbox inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off and we're gonna assume that we're gonna build this all out of half inch plywood, just for simplicity's sake. We're also going to assume that what we're showing in here is actually half an inch, not 15, 30 seconds. Um, this is more a modeling tutorial. And so what we wanna do is we wanna start by activating the line tool, which you can either do by clicking on the pencil right here or by tapping the L key on your keyboard. And so what I wanna do is I wanna start by clicking to set my first point. And so when I move my mouse, I wanna make sure that my mouse is moving in the direction of the green axis. So you wanna make sure after you've hit this point or you've clicked to set your first point that you move your mouse in this direction right here. And then we just wanna type in a value of 18 and hit the enter key. That'll draw an 18 inch line. One thing to note for beginners, make sure that you're not clicking and dragging. You don't wanna click and drag when you're drawing things like lines in SketchUp. You want to activate the tool and then single click in order to set a point. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to move your mouse around and set a direction before you type in your length. But now what we wanna do is we just wanna type in a value of eight um, inches right here. So we're just gonna type in eight and hit the enter key, making sure that our mouse is moved in the red direction. Well then, I just wanna do the same thing where I just wanna close this in. And so there's a couple ways you could do that. So you could draw a line this way on the green axis. Notice how if I hold the shift key like this, I can move my mouse over any point on this line right here in order to do that. And then I can just click. I can also activate the rectangle tool by tapping the R key and draw a rectangle along this as well. But now we have the base of our toolbox. Well, now what we wanna do is we wanna push pull this by activating the push pull tool. So you can do that either by clicking on this button right here, or I highly recommend tapping the P key on your keyboard and starting to learn those keyboard shortcuts. But now what I wanna do is I wanna single click, I'm gonna move my mouse up like this, and I'm just gonna type in a value of 0.5. Again, assuming that our half inch plywood is an actual thickness of a half inch. Um, for this model, it really shouldn't matter all that much. But now what I wanna do is I want to take this whole thing and I want to group it because I really want this to be built in parts and pieces that aren't merged together in case I need to make changes later. So. For example, if I was to come in here and let's just say that I was to start putting the ends on here and I'm just gonna throw something on here really quick. If I was to push pull this in here and do this on both sides and start adjusting this, everything gets kind of non-adjustable in the sense that all of these faces have kind of merged together and so making changes can be really difficult. Plus, I can't track the pieces that I've created in my outliner over here in my tray. So what I wanna do instead is I wanna take this whole board, I wanna select it and I wanna right click and I wanna make it a group. So we're just gonna select this and click on group right here. What that's done is that's grouped this together. So now if I draw in here and I push pull this up, notice how this object stays completely separate from this other object on the end over here. And depending on how much work you wanna do, you can come in here and you can actually organize these by pieces. So if you wanted to create like a cut list or something like that, we could right click on the group that we've created in the outliner over here and rename it. So you can get to the outliner by going to window, default tray and clicking on the outliner button right here. Or if you're on a Mac, I think you just go to the window and open up an outliner window. But what I could do is I could rename this plywood base and I could actually put the dimensions in here. So I could type in 18 inches by eight inches. And so what that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna actually allow me to see a list of the things that are in my model. You can do that or not. Um, you can also just model the parts and pieces out and not worry about this for right now. But now what I wanna do is I wanna model my side pieces. And so I'm assuming for my side pieces is these are gonna have a height of something like four inches right here. So we're just gonna type in a value of four and then I'm just gonna draw a line like this and I'm gonna draw a box. And then I'm gonna push pull that box half an inch. So I'm gonna type in a value of 0.5 right here. Now, one thing about this is we are going to repeat this. And so what I like to do is instead of using groups, 
which just basically take your object and group it so it's not going to merge. Instead, I might right click in here and make this a component instead. And so notice how when I create a component, it's going to ask me to create a definition. And in this case, we just want to name this plywood side panel. And we're just going to say 18 inches long by four inches high. And we're going to click on the create button. Make sure when you do this that the box for replace selection with component is checked. So I'm just going to click on the button for create right here. Well, the cool thing about this is instead of us having to go back in and model this out again, I can just create a copy inside of SketchUp of this object. So I could either do a control C and a control V to copy paste, and then I could click on this point, or I could do what I usually do, which is I can select this and we can use the move tool to create a copy. The move tool gives us more control over the copies that we're going to create. So what I want to do is I just want to click on the button to activate the move tool or tap the M key on my keyboard. And I want to mouse over this and I want to click on this point right here. Well, notice how now when I do this, all this is doing is this is moving this object. However, if I was to tap the control key on my keyboard with this tool active, notice how I can create a copy over here like this. So what we've got is we've got two pieces in here like this. One thing to note about this is remember how we made this a component rather than a group? Well, what that means is that means that this side right here is an instance of this object. So what that means is that means if I adjust one instance of a component, the other instances are going to adjust as well. So this is a powerful way to keep you from having to redo work in SketchUp over and over again. So if you decide that you want to make a change to one of these, you can adjust it and the change will occur on the others as well. But now what I want to do is I want to model out my end piece. And so to do that, I'm just going to draw a profile of my shape, right? So I'm assuming that this is going to go up four and a half inches right here. And then I'm assuming it's going to go up again to whatever my overall height is like this. So maybe this is going to go up another four inches. And so a lot of the time what I find is it's actually easier once I've drawn this point to just activate the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle from this point to this point right here. Well, what I want right, is I want the top of this to move in by a certain width. And so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to activate the tape measure tool and draw what's known as a guide. So the tape measure tool allows you to measure things by clicking on different points. Notice how, for example, um, I can measure this top line and I can see a length down in the bottom right hand corner like this. Well, the other thing you can do is make sure that there's a plus next to the little tape measure tool in your window. But if you tap the control key, if, if that's not on, you can tap the control key to toggle it on. But what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to draw a guideline inside of SketchUp. And so in this case, I'm going to assume that I've got a guideline that's going to come over maybe two and a half inches. So I'm going to type in a value of 2.5 and hit the enter key. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. And if you don't get a guideline in here, just make sure that you've clicked on the line, but not on a point like this midpoint, and then it should give it to you. But we're going to type in two and a half right here. Well, what that's done is that's now given me an intersection point that I can draw a line to using the line tool right here. Well, now I can erase my guides either by activating the eraser tool and clicking and dragging across them or you can also go to edit and delete all the guides with delete guides. But now I'm just going to use the eraser tool to erase out these edges right here so that I just have a solid face. And so to do that, all you have to do is tap the E key on your keyboard, and then you just want to click and drag over these edges. And so notice how that's getting rid of the edges that were along the outside here. Now, one thing to note about this is if you accidentally erase something in here and you lose your face, you can either do a control Z or you can just redraw the line in here and SketchUp should heal the face along the surface. But now what I want to do is I want to push pull this out like this and I want to push pull it out to a width of a half inch. So we're going to do a 0.5 and hit the enter key. 
And so remember what we did before with our side pieces. Well, we wanna do the same thing here. We wanna select this whole thing like this, making sure that we don't pick anything up in our background, but we just wanna right click on this and I'm just gonna make this a component and I'm just gonna call this plywood end panel. And we can go ahead and type in what the actual raw um, size of our plywood would need to be. So we could say in this case that this is gonna to need to have a width of eight inches by a height of, I think I said eight inches here as well. So we're just gonna hit the enter key to create that. Well then we can tap the M key, single click and move our mouse and we can tap control in order to create a copy over here. And notice how right now I can't place this very well because I picked the wrong base point. So what you wanna do is remember that you're going to create a copy from one point to another. Well, I wanna create this copy and I wanna have it align right here. So to do that, I'm just gonna tap the M key and I'm gonna make sure to click on this point rather than this one. And then I'm gonna tap control on my keyboard. So what that allowed me to do is that allowed me to place this right here. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna draw a circle right here for my dowel. And so to do that, what I need to do is I need to find this central point right here. And so in this case, I'm gonna make this simple and I'm not even really going to use a guide. What I'm gonna do instead is I can just tap the L key to activate the line tool and I can find the midpoint right here. And then I can just draw a line down to wherever I want this to be. Right, so for example, if I want this to be one and a half inches, I can just draw a line that's one and a half inches like this. Well then, we're just gonna use the circle tool right here in order to draw a circle. And so one thing to note about this is you do probably wanna cut a hole in this face first. And so what we can do to do that is we can double click on this end in order to go inside of this component. So notice how now I'm inside of the component. If I was to click off of this, I would be back outside the component. But what I wanna do is I wanna double click to make sure I'm in here. I wanna tap the C key to draw a circle. And I'm gonna draw a circle based on this central point. And I'm gonna assume that the circle is gonna have a radius of a half inch because I want the whole thing to be one inch. So I'm gonna type in 0.5 and hit the enter key. Notice how, because I drew this inside of the component, this is showing up over here as well. But then I'm just gonna push pull this through like this. I'm gonna go find the back side of my wall. The easiest way to do this is just to orbit to the back side or to just find a point on the back wall right here. But you wanna push pull it to this exact distance of this back face. Well, notice how when you do that, this is going to create a hole in your object for you. Well then, all I have to do is draw a circle along this object. And one thing to note about the circle is if you tap the C key and then tap the left arrow key, that's gonna allow you to lock this to this vertical direction like this. Well then, you can single click, move your mouse, and you can draw a circle like this. And then I'm just gonna push pull this all the way to the backside of this other object right here. So what I've got is I've got this big long cylinder that's gonna act as a dowel. And then one other thing you can do is you can erase out these edges with the eraser tool because you don't need them anymore. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select this whole thing. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make this a group. And we can just call this one inch dowel or better yet dowel dash one inch. And we can actually measure the length in here. This is gonna be a little longer than 18 inches. So we're gonna use the tape measure tool to figure out what this actually is. This is going to be 19 inches long. So we're gonna do dowel one inch dash 19 inches long like this. So now notice how in addition to having a toolbox in here that we can actually color up and adjust and other things like that, we can also see the parts and pieces that are in here. So we can see that we need two plywood end panels, two plywood side panels, a dowel, and a plywood base. So now what we could do is we could start dimensioning this out if we wanted to create dimensions for this. So we could just use the dimension tool in order to do this like this. And so notice how this tool allows you to actually add dimensions to your object. So you can actually see the measurements of your object like this.
So you could add dimensions. If you use layout, layout is probably a slightly better tool for doing this. But I think a lot of people that are modeling this kind of thing aren't necessarily using layout. But we can use this in order to dimension this whole thing out as well as measuring the different parts and pieces of our object. And so then one other thing we can do is we can jump into our materials right here and we can add like a wood material. So notice how there are materials built into SketchUp like this. And what you can do is you can just click on these different objects in order to add materials to them. Now, one thing I'm noticing about this wood material is notice how it's really big and grainy. It's grainy because it's kind of low resolution. You don't need to worry about that too much for right now, but we can come in here to the edit tab of our wood veneer and we can adjust the size of this. So right now, for example, this is six feet. If I come in here and type in a value of six inches, in the texture dimensions right here, notice how that's gonna resize that wood texture. So you can use this in order to adjust the size of the texture on your surfaces inside of SketchUp. So what I wanna do is I wanna set up a couple views where we can see the different um, sides of our toolbox. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna start by just setting up a front view like this. Well, notice how when we set up a front view, we get, especially if we're off to the side, we get kind of a perspective angle in here. Well, what I want to do is I want to go into my camera and turn on parallel projection. That's going to give me a straight on view of my toolbox right here. And so then I can save this using a scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the shift key and click the middle mouse button and move this over. But I'm just going to go into um, view, animation, add scene. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a scene right here that I can rotate back to. So if I wanna get back to this, I'm gonna go ahead and move my default model out of the way. But if I ever wanna get back to that view, I can just click on this right here. Notice how what that's gonna do is that's gonna save your view inside of SketchUp. So we can do view, animation, add scene. We can add another scene from the side. And you can actually right click on these and rename them right here in SketchUp 2022. So we're gonna say front for scene two. We're gonna right click on it or we're gonna say side. And we can go ahead and add some dimensions in here just by clicking like this. And then we can also create a top down view like this. So we're gonna take this one, we're gonna add a new scene. So we're just gonna right click and add a new scene right here. And we're just gonna call this top right here. So now notice how I can click between these different views like this. And if you wanted to, you could also turn parallel projection back on and create just a working view that has your perspective back on that's a little bit better for working. So we can just right click and add a scene and we're just gonna call this working view right here. Um, so one other thing is I really like my styles to be black and white for this kind of view. So what I can do is I can go over into the style section of my tray. We can go into our default styles and notice how there's styles like this hidden line or this construction documentation style that allow you to basically view this without textures. So if I wanted to use that, what I could do is I could right click and I can update this scene. Well, notice how when I update this scene, it's going to save not only my camera location, but also the style. So you could use this in order to create different styles for documentation. So this one, for example, I could um, pick the construction documentation style and it would have my textures, but it would also have a white background. You can use your styles to dictate the way that your views look inside of SketchUp. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you are interested in learning more about how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out the SketchUp Essentials course. I go a lot more in depth in 3D modeling and SketchUp in that course. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.